uh, we are recording. Awesome. Uh, welcome, everybody. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Uh, sorry that I am a little bit under the weather right now. Uh, I have my wife's parents here, so we're just having a good time. going to try to keep things lively as we can. Uh, we are here today with Mr. Oz. Oz uh, is a, the CEO of Archimedes Finance. And I got to tell you, uh, first and foremost, the fact that this is based off of Greek lore is a big plus for me. Uh, I've always been a big, big, big nerd, and I'm sure maybe you can kind of tell us a little bit about um, what exactly is, is you know, kind of the, the, the namesake for that. And I'd love to hear more about that. A uh, little bit of housekeeping before we kind of jump into things with Mr. Oz here. Uh, I do want everyone to know that there is a bit of a giveaway going on. Uh, we are going to be sending some stable coins to uh, those of us who are here who are also commenting on the YouTube video whenever this is posted. So make sure you stay tuned for that link because as soon as this is finished, we are going to have that posted and live for you over on YouTube uh, for everybody in the Archimedes community as well as uh, here the DeFi Soapbox community uh, who, who didn't get a chance to listen in. So I'm sure Mr. Oz here is going to have a, have, have a great time here to, with us today. Um, as always, uh, Mr. Oz, thanks for coming on, man. Tell us a little bit about yourself. How, how are things going for you right now? First, you don't need to call me Mr. Uh, Oz is good enough. Or the leader. <laughs> uh, yeah, everything is going well. We are almost ready to launch. Like it's it's coming really, really soon. So super excited. Uh, kind of like heads down and working. And also we have some really cool news that we're probably going to uh, publish in the few couple in the new coming weeks. So super right. excited. Cool. Yeah, so why don't you kind of, as I, as I was sort of alluring to uh, in our little intro there, uh, Archimedes, okay? So for those of us who don't know, uh, do you want to kind of go into some of the lore behind that? Because that's a that's a pretty a pretty staple story that most people know of, but, but not everybody. What's kind of the inspiration there? Yeah, so me and uh, three other friends, we like always, we're always DeFi digents. So mm -hmm. all our net worth was always into different like, taking different pools and, you know, probably having a really high DGEN score. And <laughs> when kind of like COVID hit, we just had tons of friends asking us, hey, how can I get into DeFi? It was also kind of like DeFi summer. And we said, okay, let's use this opportunity. And we created a stablecoin fund because that's where we find there is a lot of uh, basically desire and demand. So we raised a few millions. We start to basically just take it in the different convex pools. And we meant to do like more than 40% returns, which was amazing. And we just realized, wow. okay, we're, yeah. But we realized all those returns came from like, you know, just CVX and CRV that we were just selling immediately. Right. And not right. from like any, like not real economical activity. And we realized the so more that, people would know about it. That's convex and curve, right? Just going to diminish. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I just making sure I heard you right. Yeah, and, and you see right now, like, if you look right now and like, you know, to do the same strategy that we did, probably your return is going to be around 4% and not 40. So we kind of saw it coming and we decided, okay, how can we squeeze the most out of the fund and how can we do any leverage to those like market neutral positions or like super low volatile positions. We tried the different protocols out there and we just couldn't find any good solution. And basically, this is how we came up with Archimedes, which is basically a marketplace or protocol that on the one hand can offer people that just want to get high yields on stables. You know, we offer them like a curve pool or basically a place where they can get this high yield savings account. And on the other hand, we allow people that want to take a bit more risk. Uh, we allow to take leverage on also similar positions that are like market neutral, low volatility. Awesome. So what, if you could just, uh, maybe expand on that. So I'm just, I'm just looking through your guys' discord right now and, and kind of reading some of your FAQs and just looking at like what the, the question of what Archimedes is, um, you know, your, your answer is a meta vault collateralized lending protocol. So for us mere more mere mortals, uh, is that kind of the the breakdown of of kind of what you just said there is like, okay, you can come in here and stake stables um, yeah. for for like a more safe return, and then also like if you are more degen, you want to go the riskier route, you could be able to lever leverage as well, right? 
Exactly. So MetaVault is basically what we used to do in our fund. It's basically taking money and jump between different convex or Aave or compound or curve pools to get returns. Yeah. Uh, but it can be like now we expanded it a little bit and I'm honestly like not the biggest fan of uh, this MetaVault's definition. We should probably change it. Uh, that, yeah, it's basically market neutral strategies. Right, right. Like super safe blue chips protocol. Right. Okay. Um, and, and you guys are, you guys are also, when you guys do launch, you're launching on Ethereum, right? So is there, is there plans to push out to other chains in the future? So I, I always like to say, follow the money. Right. Or basically <laughs> follow the liquidity. Uh, so right now, you know, it's everything is available. That's the nice thing. It's like everything is on Ethereum. Uh, once hopefully it will be big enough, good enough. Um, yes. Like in the roadmap, our plan is to go cross chain and probably the next chain will be one that is, yeah, have the most liquidity, but maybe before we do so, I'll drop some alpha here is we also want to have like strategies for Bitcoin and also for Ethereum. So we'll Ooh. probably consider what's, what might be better to do. So I've got a question here because. Um, I, I am somebody who I've always heard this term leverage thrown around, um, and I'm sure everybody here, but me is an absolute expert, uh, in leverage trading and, and they know exactly what everything is and they know all the jargon and all the slogans and how to make it all kind of piece together for those of us who are watching, maybe, maybe are, are trying to get some education out of this. Can you kind of go into a, as simple as you can, I guess, what is leverage trading and what's happening when someone takes part in leverage trading? Yeah. Uh, yeah, happy to explain. And first, I'm sure that you're an expert more than me. <laughs> I to explain. So yeah, what's leverage is basically borrowing money and you have to do something with this money. So maybe just to use an example, you put $100 as collateral or think about buying a house. It's kind of like leverage. You have only $1,000 or like 100,000 and you buy a million dollar house. The bank give you the rest of the money as a loan. And this is basically how you leverage. And as a collateral, they have the house. So it's really similar here. You give us some collateral and it can be like different AVE tokens or OUSD. And we give you a loan that will be like more money or maybe more OUSD. And this way you can make higher returns. Not sure if I managed to do it simple or if I confuse everyone. So happy. I happy think that to, that's, to I think that that's a pretty good breakdown. I, I, I was going to say. Yeah, that I don't I don't think it could really get any easier than that. Um, so at the end of the day, if someone decides to come to your protocol and they want to leverage, when when you start seeing you you, you hear people say things like, "Oh, I I am borrowing this leverage. I'm I'm leveraging 10x. I'm leveraging 20x, 100x sometimes on really in really degen plays." What exactly does that mean when people are, when people are doing that? Yeah, so you have a few different types of leverage or like what people mean when they say it. Mm -hmm. um, if someone say, hey, I just took 10x position on Bitcoin, is basically betting that the price of Bitcoin will go up, will go up. And you know, if it go up by 1%, it's gonna make 10%. And also is, is having the same like risk if it goes down. Like if it goes by 1%, is having 10% like loss. Yeah. Uh, so this is one type of leverage. Our type of leverage is a bit different uh, so it's the same principles. You give us 100, let's say OUSD and in return, you get thousand dollars OUSD. Uh, but what we allow people to take leverage on is tokens like OUSD or the different like Aave tokens, which are tokens that getting yield. And why they're getting yield is like each one of them has his own basically benefits. If it's like OUSD, the way they work is similar to like a meta vault as we defined, which you give them USDC and they take this money, invest in the different convex pools and they give you the return in OUSD. If I'm trying to simplify. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So no, you are, you do great. And basically they have a return. And right now, like, I think the average return is around 3%. So okay. in our case, and the value of OUSD is one to one, like it's you know, sometimes it's get unpegged by 1% here or there, but if you look in the last, like since the launch, 
uh, it's always one to one if it's in like DeFi summer and if even in DeFi winter. Um, so what happened? Yeah. So what you're betting here is not that the value will go up or down. It's basically that you're gonna get yield on it. And because they're making two or three percent, if you're not leveraged, you're just getting this three percent. Let's call it. If you have ten x leverage, you're gonna make thirty percent return. I see. How exactly? What, what what's the time frame? If you're like you're saying, some of these some of these pools have have return. Is that is that over the course of a year? So usually, like when I say three percent, is yeah, I speak like it's three percent APY. APY. Okay. Cool. Yeah, but your return you're getting it basically every block. So every you know. Right. So you get so, it immediately. You don't need to yes. wait one year to get your three percent. You're not locked in or anything. So what you're saying is the optimal strategy is to take all of my money and go a hundred X into and leverage a hundred X into one of these pools and get a 300% return. Right. Of course, I'm not financial advisor. <laughs> um, there's no like any of the best things. So everyone should do is on due diligence and like, yeah. The all right. Thing I, is I would, def I would definitely you advise you X. not to do that, sir. <laughs> uh, but I think yeah, no, I think but... I think while we're talking about I think well I'll preface this like you can't really talk about leverage without talking about liquidation and the inherent risk that comes along with that too right so like can you go into I know that you you kind of state that the the risk of li liquidation for you guys is is on the the lower end of the spectrum but but why is that? Uh, I think the re first maybe let's try to understand why there is liquidation. Mm -hmm. Yes. So please. let's say someone. Uh, is doing a 10x position, which means he put $100, but now as if he has $10,000 worth of certain coin. If this coin went down by 10%, so basically his $1,000 are now $900, he basically lost all his money, his initial $100. Mm. And because the protocol that helped him to open the position doesn't want to bury any risk that now it will fall from 1,000 to 800 and they will need to put money out of pocket, they basically say, hey, when the price drops from 1,000 to, let's say, 920, we close the position. There is liquidation. Mm -hmm. um, and in our scenario, in order that there will be liquidation, you basically need that OUSD or the basically tokens that we will support, that they will drop by more than 10%, which never had happened in their history. And also, because we understand their mechanism, there should never be a case like this. So this is why the risk for liquidation is like really, really low. And it's so low that actually like in the V1, in the first version that we are like going to launch really soon, uh, we're not going to have liquidation risk. So actually you can think about as if the protocol is taking some of the risk mm. and not only the users. That's pretty nice. You see, you keep saying, uh, I, I, at first I thought I was mishearing you, but it sounds like you're saying OUSD mm -hmm. as an octopus. Is that, a, is that a stable coin that I'm not familiar with? Yeah, so it's the origin protocol uh, okay. stablecoin called OUSD. O like Oprah, and then USD as a mm. dollar. No, no, I, I said octopus. O is an octopus, you know. Yeah, Opera yeah. Is, so, yeah. you know. <laughs> totally, totally I'm, different I'm, word, I'm, man. I'm used to, okay, yeah, yeah, all good. <laughs> That's cool, though. Okay, I, 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 Murdoch, are you familiar with OUSD? Because I've not, I've not heard of this protocol. Um, I'm not. And, and that kind of leads me... Uh, maybe maybe we'd be going off track here, but I'm going to run with it. This kind of leads me to my biggest question for you, Oz, is like this, this, like what you guys have built or in the process of launching reminds me very much so of DeFi, let's just say a year and a half ago, right? Where that was kind of everyone's focus. We'll say before um, things like, uh, like Wonderland came about and we we're doing all these crazy APYs with DAOs, very like DeFi 2.0 stuff, right? Now, since then, the the vast majority of people that, well, at least that that I interact with uh, within our community are, are mainly focused on these DeFi protocols that give you passive income. Um, and they're, they're super not, I would say that the majority of those people are not very much educated on maybe the things that we're talking about today or the benefits of, of using like a protocol like you. So how do you plan to bridge the gap to take people from, um, you know, 
places where they're earning, regardless of risk, right? Places where they're earning, you know, one to two percent a day uh, in DeFi. Granted, like I said, those are extremely risky and obviously not sustainable. But how do you capture that audience and bring them over to a protocol where they're, you know, essentially staking stable coins for, um, you know, a much smaller APY? Yeah, so I'm not sure if those are like our target audience sure. in the beginning. The people that are looking at 2% a day, it's <laughs> right, probably right. like, yeah, the wonderland of, mm -hmm. it's probably not our target audience. Uh, we're focusing on like this quality assets, blue chip tokens. Like this is the only thing that we allow you to leverage. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but here you can really understand what's your risk, which is, I hope, or like you can do the diligence that it, it might be like much riskier than other things. Mm -hmm. So this way we feel like, hey, if you're comfortable with getting 50%, 60% um, <laughs> on like your stables with risk that you can quantify, it might be better than 2% a day that there's a high chance that right, you right, get right. Uh, wrecked. So, yeah, and I think that, well, I think that that's important. Go ahead, Luda. Well, I, I, I was going to say something, I was going to make another joke, but now, now the timing's off and, but <laughs> at, at the end of the day, I was going to say something to the effect of, well, I would think that SHIB is a pretty stable asset, right? And you know, it's got a lot of backing. So maybe you guys should just have a uh, SHIB, SHIB Uno. Um, you know, that way you guys can, we can leverage against that. That, that would be something pretty fair to, to ask for, right? Um, I'm pretty sure the shame is like the price is super. Um, I think, uh, Burdock, what, what kind of other questions you got for him? Uh, I, 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 he's doing lovely at explaining this, uh, to, to someone who doesn't really understand leverage in the first place. Yeah. And, and, and I agree. And I think that, I think that's important. I, I think that, uh, the more that we can educate people in crypto and DeFi period, um, <laughs> is obviously going to, to lead us to uh, like more mass adoption uh, as a whole. So yep. I think, I think that this is, I think that this is great. Um, however, I think that, I think if that, I can add something about them. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. No. So like mass adoption is also like one of our goals. Like, yeah, we want to bring DeFi to, to everyone. Um, then of course, everything in transparent way, in, in code we trust. Um, so what we build is like all those positions, we package them as NFTs. And I always like to use my wife as an example. She's like, she's super smart, you know, work as a product manager in like a good, in like a good tech company. Um, she went to MIT, she's like really smart. And while we build this product, we ask her, hey, can you open position like it, with some of our competitors? Mm -hmm. And, you know, after trying two, three protocols, she just told me like, Hey, leave me from DeFi. Like, I don't want to watch this YouTube videos. Like, yeah, leave me alone. Yeah. <laughs> um, on that, yeah. And, and on the other hand, she knows how to spend my money and just buy some NFTs on OpenSea. So she can just connect, you know, the credit card or played and just, just buy NFTs. So what we think will, will help with mass adoption into DeFi is basically having, um, NFTs as part of, uh, that will represent like a DeFi positions, which is something that we're trying to do here. And I hope this will also help with mass adoption to make it much, much simpler for people, uh, just to buy NFT that represents some position. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Well, uh, it definitely, it definitely seems that, uh, it, it is important because there are so many DeFi opportunities and DeGen opportunities for people to get into uh, nowadays. Um, you guys, I mean, I know we're, we've seen a lot uh, as far as, uh, you know, bots are concerned when it comes into getting into those to, to, to obviously generate returns. Um, other than other than just, just providing leverage trading, are there any other utilities that Archimedes is currently working on or trying to get spearheaded so that uh, when this mass adoption hopefully does take place, uh, you guys have more to offer than just leverage? Uh, yeah, of course. So, um, first of all, like right now we allow leverage only on DeFi related things. Mm -hmm. And in the future, we think that we can use like DeFi in order to make, you know, maybe we leverage or basically kind of like bondify a real estate or more like real life thing. And we allow people to also like 
take leverage on this or basically use boring. Um, so this is one thing. The second thing is beside the leverage, we also have this like how we get this liquidity to give people to take leverage. Um, and in order to do so, we have this like IELTS savings account. And so basically we allow people to put money in this account. They know what's happening with this money. It's not like in a bank that you have no idea. You put the money and it's like a black box. So with us, you know exactly what this money is using for, and you're making like nice returns that should be much higher than the basically average market uh, return. So I think like offering people to borrow and to do leverage on other things beside, you know, right now the convex or, uh, or curve strategies mm. and to have this idle savings account, I think this is kind of like the, the few most important thing. Right. And, and, and obviously having a, having a, a kind of a central area where you can go that's still in DeFi, but someplace you can put your stables, uh, in order to, to make sure they're safe, but also working for you with kind of the APYs that you guys are referring to, I, I think is something that a lot of DeFi DGEN users, uh, probably, you know, kind of like myself are, are always looking for, um, with that in mind, tell me a little bit about, uh, is it, did, did I read this right? When I was looking through your, 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 your stuff, uh, you guys have a stable coin or, or LV, LV USD. Yeah. So we're going, we plan to launch also a token called LV USD, uh -huh. which, um, this is basically a mechanism to how we can move money between people that give us, let's say USDC or their stables mm. and how we can give someone else now or USD or how we can give him like a AVE token or the different things that we allow people to leverage. Okay. So something, but it's something that is necessary, very necessary to facilitate yeah, it's more from transition. mechanism to exactly. Oh, okay. That makes, that makes sense to me. Okay. Roger that. Mm. Um, I think that we have um, a couple questions from the community, and then Billy Wilkie. I see you raising your hand, man. If you want, if you have a question, just uh, check out the AMA questions tab and uh, or channel and ask your questions there. Um, but Oz, before we jump into to questions, obviously when we're talking about, I know that this is for me the way I look at it. If a if a protocol is is looking to have people stake stables and things like that or park stables into like a high interest uh, savings account i think that security and trust is is a huge factor especially right now you know over the last couple months we've seen a lot of people get wrecked um but what are you guys doing as far as as far as like the team goes uh i know that on your website it says that you guys are doxxed um, but as far as like security things that you guys are looking to implement to make sure that everybody's funds keep safe, is there anything that you want to touch on there? Yeah, so we use the best practices. So we had an audit with Alborn. Now we're actually going through the second audit with Alborn, uh, which is, you know, one of the top tier audit firms. Uh, beside that, we're also going to have a uh, bug bounty with Immunify. Uh, so this, I think, like the top two things that we're doing right now, and after it, we're going to have an ongoing audit okay. with different firms. Um, on top of it, like, as you said, we are all doxxed, which I think makes a big difference. Like, yeah, I can tell you different protocols and you have no idea, or like, there's no way even to find like who is actually the owner. Right. And here, probably with some easy Google search, you can find where I live, uh, which is scary for me, but. Um, <laughs> yeah. I can imagine. But... Yeah, um, I, I would probably just go straight based off of your uh, Discord profile, uh, your profile picture. I think I could probably find you just from that from that awesome mustache that you have, uh, just by itself. Yeah. <laughs> Only November, but yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Uh, well, in that case, let's uh, let's let's take a glance over here at the AMA questions. Cool. Um, we have Amplify with uh, with a couple of questions. He says. Why does Archimedes prioritize lower risk stablecoin positions and not just being a leverage protocol? Yeah. Um, so that's one thing that we kind of like decided from day one. And again, we started as being a users that want to take leverage positions. Mm -hmm. And 
yeah, I, I took personally a lot of like leverage positions on things that are super volatile. And the problem is many times I just got liquidated. And this is actually like after I did my research and I realized that most of the other protocols, they make their money just from liquidations. Mm -hmm. And we chose to have actually a different model that we wanted all the incentives will align between the users and the protocol. So this is why we prefer to have basically protocols that are um, basically super safe and not like only volatile. Right. So to reduce all the risk. Okay, cool. Uh, and then his second question was, has Archimedes considered creating their own stable coins beyond LVUSD? Um, that's a great question. And kind of like I, I noted before that uh, we're planning probably to have like a Bitcoin and Ethereum strategies. Mm -hmm. uh, so for those, because we don't want the people that have exposure to stablecoin will have exposure to basically like to use this stablecoin that they will have exposure to Bitcoin or to Ethereum. We're going to open like two more uh, stables. It can be like LV ETH and LV uh, Bitcoin. Mm -hmm which basically would be stable, but would be stable for Ethereum or for Bitcoin. Awesome. Yeah, cool. Hopefully that, that answers, that should answer your question, uh, or both of them rather. Um, and then one final question from Blackhawk, and the, he said, uh, are they going to be using Fireblocks? I'm not sure what that is, so maybe you can shed some light there. Um. We might use Fireblocks, we speak also with others. They're actually Israelis and, and I'm also from Israel and I know them well, the founders. Mm -hmm. um, so we're in conversation with them. And for whoever doesn't know, uh, basically Fireblocks is a you know, business or like a software that helps you to have like custody and APYs and how to do like multi-sig and how to basically manage all your treasury and all the funds. Mm. So many basically DAOs and companies use them. Um, we might use them in the future. Right now, in the beginning, we're going to use the best practices of like multi-sig, and then we'll, we'll move forward and see. Okay. Awesome. Well, uh, we really, really appreciate uh, you taking the time. Uh, is there anything, you know, kind of in closing, is there anything that uh, you want to make sure is communicated to potential investors? Anything really specific uh, that you would like to 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 make sure everybody is aware of, you know, as they as they are kind of as you guys are getting ready for launch and uh, things to look out for. Yeah, so I would say maybe the tokenomics, which is something that we we didn't touch too much, and also I'm not sure how much we published already, like all the materials. Uh, but the cool thing that we're gonna have like our own Arch token, um, and. In order to participate and to take any leverage position, you will have to use Arch. Uh, how it's going to work, it's with some Dutch auction, but I'll keep like, you know, all the details in, you know, in the documents in our website and in our Discord that if people want to hear more, they can always go there. Absolutely. Yeah. And we'll make sure that, that, uh, that, that we are able to have your, and, 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 and if you have any other documentation that you'd like for the community to see, just let us know. We can make sure to have an announcement for that. Um, but uh, other than that, guys, uh, I think that about does it here. Um, as always, make sure that uh, you are able to follow Archimedes. I think I have y'all's website posted in an announcement. So uh, scroll up on the announcements a little bit. I'll also post it again here uh, as, as a follow-up. Um, everybody, though, make sure that we're thanking uh, Oz for coming out here. Not Mr. Oz. Don't call him Mr. Oz. He'll get mad. He gets cranky if you call him Mr. Oz. Uh, and uh, anyway, uh, but just to make sure that everybody's on the same page, um, we're going to be posting the YouTube link here pretty quickly. Uh, we're going to be giving away some some USDC to to some people who are who are uh, hopping into the comments and leaving a comment there, trying yeah. to boost the algorithm because everybody needs to kind of understand that that we, we are hosting quality projects and Archimedes here. I think could could be a potential really really big winner, um, right? And that's that's ultimately what what we're here for is to show you guys really strong projects. And I have no doubt that Oz and his team is going to do a great job. Um, but other than that, Oz, like I said, thank you so much for coming on and, uh, and hopefully we'll be able to have you on again real soon. Okay, bud. Yeah, man. Thank, thank you, you so much. It was a pleasure. Awesome. All right, guys. Well, take care and we will talk to you all shortly. See ya. See ya.